Hey everybody, we're back at it again. <laughs> oh God, it's old school nerd. Um, so today, um, we're going to be doing uh, another reaction, and uh, this is one that has been asked for so much. It's almost this one is almost, and you know what? Before I even start, let me get the hell up out the way, because <laughs> if I forget this beard will be in the way of the amazingness that we need to perceive here. This particular reaction was requested by all of you as much as Nightwish. Now, I know that's hard to believe because I've never seen anything like the Nightwish army and them just <laughs> wanting more and more and more. And that's awesome. But, this next reaction is Amarath, and the song is called Strong, and it's featuring a singer by the name of Nura Luhimo. Now, I may have not said that correct, but let's be honest, I'm going to mess up everybody's name the first time, but it doesn't matter. Now, from what I've caught so far, I haven't seen this video, but I looked up Nora Luhimo and she's the lead singer of another band that a lot of you have requested. So it gets two for the price of one. <laughs> Here we go. But before we do that, this is the first time I'm doing this, so please forgive me if this bothers you. I'm sorry. But these people pay good money for this. The amazing Patreon supporters and friends of this channel, um, I just want to list out two right now. Uh, uh, Eunice. Um, <laughs> it's funny. Again, I, I told Eunice before. I was like, when he finally explained to me how to say his name, I went, dude, that's like a town 10 miles from me, but it's not spelled like that. Um, the town that's close to where I live is E-U-N-I-C-E. -E, Eunice. But he's like, dude, in my home tongue, that's how you spell Eunice. All right. Works for me, bro. And of course, uh, Michael, uh, these two guys are epic friends of the channel. Uh, they have supported me uh, with their contributions, their time, their thoughts, and their ideas. Thank you so much. And of course, um, uh, nice, uh, I'm going to just say Nee 7 Roxy. It's probably not your name, but hey, that's what you sent me. Um, and of course, Fabrizio Gorla, um, uh, amazing supporters on Patreon. So, um, Got to give props out to uh, my family and friends who support me. Um, I can't do this without y'all. Cannot do it without you. And I appreciate you so much. Um, so now that I've gotten that out of the way and given props where props are definitely due, this is Amrith. The song is called Strong, featuring Nora Luhimo. And um, let's get into this because I'm so pumped for this. Um, again, this one has been requested as much as anything else so it better be good and based upon so far all the requests all of you have made y'all have never steered me wrong let's get into this now my name is old school nerd and the link to this video uh, the original video will be in the description below please check them out i'm sure they're awesome because hey y'all request y'all requested them um like and subscribe to the channel you guys have been so amazing um the channel is exploding and i'm just trying to keep up with all the amazing feedback and requests you guys are giving me don't stop because this is the greatest thing that I've done in 2020 outside of um, my family and, and those that I love around me. Um, Y'all are in there too now, so let's do this. Here we go. Amareth Strong. Okay. I'll back this up. Okay, so I see this star, okay, and it's laid down at an angle away. And at first I thought, why is the camera out of focus? Is the feed really, really crappy? But no, this video is in HD, so apparently they filmed it grainy like this, out of, slightly out of focus, so that's important. Uh, quick thing, um, the lead singer from Amareth is wearing a crown of thorns. Now, 
I don't know where she's going with this imagery, but I know that I'm sure plenty of people have seen this and went, and they were offended by it. But we're going to see where they go with it, and it may not be for an offensive reason. The other thing I just noticed was they showed the... Um, I'm assuming this is Nora here. Uh, Nora looks like a Valkyrie warrior. And she looks like she could whip somebody's ass. And she's just laying there. So let's get into this. I know I made a lot of oh, that voice. Anybody notice that the camera goes out of focus and back into focus and out of focus and back into focus? I'm assuming that's on purpose. Um, her voice? On the money. Um, sultry, rich, her eyes piercing, great look. Um, I don't want to stop this. I do want to say one more thing real quick before we continue. Has anybody else noticed that this iconic look of someone within a pentagram star in this form although it appears that she is taking the form of jesus on the cross here i don't believe that's the case um if you go and search on google for a image like this you will find it in a very old rock band's um iconic album cover i'm not going to tell you what it is it's your job to go find it Okay, Amrith already in the groove. I'm loving the way the drums are. Okay. Okay, if if that's if that's the lead singer of Amareth and that's her duet, if if Nora is the person harmonizing with her vocals, they need to get together more often because the I'm gonna try to give you guys an example real quick that the, the first thing that came to my mind is if you here's an example from my channel. Go watch the um the Floriansen cover of Alone by Heart. Have you noticed it's an acoustic version and when she goes into the chorus, there seems to be something missing, right? And it's hard to say that there's something missing from Floriansen's vocals, but everyone that's seen the song Alone by Heart originally, when when Ann Wilson would go into the chorus, her sister Nancy would join her and they harmonized in such an epic way, it elevated the song. Floor did an amazing job in her rendition of it, but she didn't have a backing vocal to raise her vocals up. And I, that's the only drawback I felt to that cover of Alone by, you, by Floor, was that there was no backing vocal with her to elevate that, that chorus. I've only seen less than a minute of this song and this video and when they jump into that chorus nora the two vocalists connection i don't know who's high i don't know who's doing the low i don't know who's carrying the melody and i don't know who's harmonizing all i do know is the last time i heard two women that instantly their singing together made a song go from here to off the screen and change a dynamic like that, for me, was heart. So, after only hearing a minute, this could very easily be one of my favorite songs on YouTube just because of that one iconic dynamic between two strong, powerful female singles, singers that complement each other. That when you fuse them together, it elevates a song. It's similar to 
two guitarists, a lead and a, and a rhythm, when you put them together, it changes music from just being a song to an iconic sound that gravitates people into it. We're a minute in, and I, and I am I'm pumped. I mean, I've got, I've, got, I've got freaking, I have the hair. The hair is standing up on my arm when I heard them two singing together. This is insane. I'm pumped to hear more. <laughs> I want to hear if the, if the other if the other vocalist does a chorus. I mean, verse. Oh, she is. Ooh. She's got a hell of a look. She looks. Done, done. Holy crap. I don't react like this too often, but okay. Um, I want to talk about the imagery. Um, the blonde, the, the Nora, she is singing. Her voice is very rich. A lower, um, much more full alto but yet a power alto that could top soprano. You could tell just by the way her tones come through. Extremely powerful singer, which reminds me a lot of Ann Wilson. I'm not saying she can sing like Ann Wilson. I haven't heard enough of her yet. But that vocal styling, that vocal power, the passion comes through strong. Like the song, strong. Fierce, fierce singer. So this means I may have to look into the band that she's a part of for sure. I think it's Battle Beast or something. And I just I just remembered it. Her look, awesome. Um, the Valkyrie look. Um, her look is very, very powerful. Okay. In in retrospect, the lead singer of Amareth, her look in this video is going to excite some people and it may turn some people off. Because when you use the imagery of a crown of thorns, people automatically think of Jesus on the cross with the crown of thorns. But I do believe when you're looking at the pentagram on, on the ground, it's a metaphor. This is what my take is from it. I'm not as offended as some people will be because I don't believe she's wearing a crown of thorns to mock Christian to faith because the words of the song speak of things putting you down, placing you in a level, putting you in a box, uh, degrading you who you are. But at the same time, these women are going to be beyond it. They're going to break free. They're going to be strong. What people don't remember or people don't realize is that beyond the religious canonations of the crown of thorns on Jesus' head during the crucifixion was why it was there. If you know your biblical history, the crown of thorns was placed upon Jesus' head before he was put on the cross as a mockery of him. Remember, at the time, the Roman Empire occupied the um, Judea, where Jesus was living. And Pontius Pilate and the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the spiritual leaders of the Jewish community of, Ju of Judea. At the same time, they were occupied by the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. So the Sanhedrin thought that the teachings of Jesus were heresy and um, sh he should be put to death for it. So the problem was is that Pontius Pilate didn't want any part of it. He said, hey, do whatever you want with him. I'm washing my hands of him. And then the Sanhedrin dictated that he should be crucified after they beat him and everything else. The key is, is that there were Roman soldiers there who 
they were Roman legionaries and their job was to perform the crucifixion, which was a common execution method done by the Roman Empire. What people don't realize is that the crucifixion was not a Jewish or a punishment from Judea. But the Sanhedrin wanted to make an example of Jesus. So in some way, shape, or form, and the Bible doesn't specify exactly that we know of, is that between when the Sanhedrin had him beaten and the crown of thorns was placed on his head and he carried the cross up to the hill for crucifixion, the reason why they put a crown of thorns on his head was because many of his followers believed him to be the foretold prophesied Messiah. Remember at this time, there were no kings in Israel, okay? There was the Sanhedrin, there was the Roman governor, but there had not been a king of Israel or Judea for many, many years. Because since the time of Solomon and the kings after Solomon, the Jewish people and the, the, the nation of Israel and the, and the tribes of Judah were constantly conquered by other empires, Babylons, it just you name it, it goes all the way through. And the Temple of Solomon was destroyed by the Romans. And so there was no king. So because so many people thought of, at the time, the uh, prophet Isaiah and some other prophets, uh, the prophet of Daniel as well, foretold of the Son of God returning and being the Messiah, the Savior, to bring God's kingdom, to be the king of the Jewish people. So many people believed in Jesus and what he was saying that it was still fresh in their minds because that was the, their lore. That's what they believed in. Could you imagine if you were Nordic, okay, and you hear the songs of Odin and the classic tales of, of Thor and Loki and the Nordic gods, and all of a sudden somebody shows up and they actually have a hammer that shoots lightning? <laughs> if that was to happen, the Nordic people would be like, this is all of our legends foretold and they're now true. So when Jesus did this, they put the crown of thorns on him and mocked him saying, he's the king of the Jews. So he's a king, but he's broken by the will of the Sanhedrin and by the boot and power of the Roman Empire. And they even put a sign above him on the cross that said king of the Jews in mockery. I believe... This is my interpretation of this. I've said all that to say this. I believe that her rendition and her imagery of wearing the, of the crown of thorns serves one simple thing. They are, it, they are mirroring each other. The lead singer of Amareth is broken. She's made, being made a mockery of. She's wearing a crown of thorns, similar to Jesus was, as a mockery of your role. You will not be anything special. You are subservient. You are not to be valued. And at the same time, Nora shows up dressed like a Valkyrie warrior who answers to no one. And they're standing across this fire pit, this, this cauldron of fire, and they're singing these words to each other. So I, for me, the imagery is not so much a mockery of the Christian faith, but it is actually a symbol, like Jesus with a crown of thorns is a symbol of his mockery of his station, putting him in his place before he was, before he was killed. She's doing the same, where the crown of thorns represents that people tell her who she needs to be or put her in her place. And this song is about them breaking free and being strong. I've said all of that because you have to understand right now I'm freaking out. I'm sweating in my shirt because I'm, I'm, I still have, my hair is still standing up right now because you have these two singing, these two singers and their, their vocals elevate each other. The symbolism, the power that they're showing even in the references of being pushed down, the words that they're using are showing them to be vulnerable, but where they're not going to accept it and they're going to extend themselves beyond. Outside of the fact that I have to explain to my girls that she's not mocking God, this is a song that I would want my girls to listen to because my daughters, as a father of three girls and two of them being minors, they're not adults yet, 
I would want them to be told, no matter what anyone tells you, you can break free and you can be strong. This is the kind of one, this is the kind of song, these words that I'm hearing and the message of the song is something that as a father, I'd want my girls to have and to emulate and, and, and be, uh, be in their mind because this is a message for them. Um, could the imagery be a little bit more um, acceptable to everyone? Of course it could. But then, of course, would the message be as strong if you went passive with it? Maybe they're pushing the boundaries because they want people to hear what they're saying and to realize how important it is. But then again, I'm, I'm a 46-year-old dad from Louisiana in the United States. What the hell do I know? All right, um, it's in reverse, by the way. The, the video is going in reverse right now. Okay, um, this is the perfect image I, I, I wanna designate um, real quick. Um, again, I'm getting heart vibes from these two, okay? Um, when, when, when you grow up listening to bands like Heart with two sisters or two women singers that ep elevate each other, it, it, this reminds you of that, whether you want to or not. Um, you can't. I can't break free of the similarities of the vocal stylings. Um, here's the thing: in the renditions of Heart, everyone always knew that Anne was a stronger singer than Nancy. Nancy was more musically talented than Anne, with guitars and all the, everything else. But I got to be honest with you: I don't think I could pick which one's better than the other. I think they uh, accompany each other so well. Here's what's really weird. These vocals, these lyrics, this arrangement of this song, the way the, the choruses are set, the way the bridge is placed, the arrangement of these tags of vocal um, shouting um, or call outs or battle cries before they jump back into the chorus, the words of the chorus, it's so epic. It is as epic as a Nightwish show visually and experience-wise, but just in an intimate video between two women. Here's what's funny. The music is amazing, but I haven't thought about it yet. Because I really believe that Amareth, as, they are amazing musicians. I gotta be honest, the, the musicians of Amareth have literally built a vehicle, and these two women rode that vehicle and were the stars of this video not just visually in the video, but their vocals. <laughs> not only is this song on the playlist, this song is on the playlist when I'm driving in the car with my daughters. A another song this reminds me of, there was a song done by Fozzie. Yes, Fozzie. Not the Muppet. Technically, yes, the Muppet. But the band that's le the lead singer of it is Chris Jericho, the wrestler, right? And... They did a song a couple of albums back called um, Unstoppable. And it was with a female vocalist that kind of did the lead and Chris Jericho did backup vocals for her. And the song was about being unstoppable and that you couldn't break her. She was unstoppable. And I'm telling you right now, my two youngest daughters, we listen to that in the car every day on the way to school, every day on the way to soccer practice. This was, this was my daughter's battle anthem 
Fozzie Unbreakable. Just check it out. I'm sorry, Unstoppable. Check it out. Just check it out. Trust me. It, it, if you're if you're if you are a parent of a daughter or or you're a woman and anyone has ever given you shit about you're a woman so therefore you have to be in a certain place or have a certain identity or a certain level that you can achieve, drop two big middle fingers and listen to Unstoppable by Fozzy or this thing right here. Um, I'm a, I am literally. I'm sweating in my shirt right now. I, I just can't get over this song. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to this a few more times. Um, that was Amrith Strong featuring Nora Luhimo. And if this is what Laura Luhimo does with Battle Beast, I'm going to have to dig into this one too. And hats off to Amrith. This was an amazing um, duet. This was, the visuals were amazing. The message was poignant. And I cannot say enough about it. However, it is YouTube, so I can't talk forever. I gotta go. Um, like and subscribe to this uh, channel. Um, of course, the link to this video is in the description. Check this thing out. It is so freaking good. Again, this blows my mind. And it takes a lot to blow my mind. It gave me freaking chills. It never happens. This is an emo as emotional for me on a hype level. Like I'm ready to go fight somebody right now or go run a mile or freaking. I really feel like I could go to battle right now after listening to this emotionally amped up as much as Constance from Spirit Box welled up in me emotions of grief and loss did. I don't know about all of you in YouTube land, my followers, my supporters, my Patreon buddies um, and supporters and family, but you, all of you, ladies, gentlemen, and y'all have really put emotion in my face and I am barely hanging on because it is, I'm hyped. I got to go, I got to go take my blood pressure. I'm pretty sure it's rizzed up. Okay. That was Amrith. I'm out of here. Uh, old school nerd, I'm going to go take a walk so I can catch my breath because <laughs> that was so freaking good. Talk to you later. Bye.